So when we got home, my mom was like, ah, ah, man, this baby is not fine. This baby does not look fine. Ah, ah. I'm like, what do you mean, mama? Nah, I've never had a baby before. Hello, guys. My name is Messi Khawailo Malika. I am from Polokwani, Mulejaga Malika. I'm 24 years old, so this is my story. In 2015, after finishing matric, I got my result in 2016, January. So the results that I got, they're not the results that I wanted. And I couldn't go to the varsity that I wanted to go to because of the results that I got. So I was like, and I'm not staying home. I wanted to do physiotherapist after matric, but because of my results, I couldn't get to the varsities that I applied to. So I told my mom, Mama, I can't stay home. I need to go to any college that I can do something with during this year. And then she was like, okay, so where are you going? I'm like, I can go to my sister in Rustenburg. She was like, okay, cool. You can go, you can go there, you'll find what you will do. And then I left home in 2016, January, I left home. I went to my sister in Rustenburg. When I got there, I applied for mechanical engineering in Springfield College. So it's something that was way out of my career line. I didn't even like it. So I was just going there because I didn't want to sit home that year. So I started mechanical engineering and then we wrote our June exams and then there was a freshers party. After that, I, I was like, I'm going to this freshers party. And then I went there with my friends. When I got there, I'm a Christian, by the way, I don't even drink alcohol. So I was like, I'm just going there to have fun with my peers. So I went to the club. It was um, Club Silk in Rustenburg. So we went there and then we sat on this other bench. It was on top. So me and my friend, we sat there. I bought myself a cold drink because I don't drink. And then we sat there. And then there were three guys who came in when they were approaching, I told my friend that, you see that guy, the, the tall one, uh, when I get out of this club, I'll, he is going to be my boyfriend. She was like, no, you are kidding. I'm like, yes, he's going to be my boyfriend. And then she was like, okay, we'll, we'll see. So my friend had to leave because her mom wanted keys at home. So she left the club. I was left alone with the guys and some girls that I didn't know. So I didn't talk to that guy when we were in the club. We didn't talk, we were just chilling there. And then until I saw them leaving the club, I was like, ah, what am I waiting for? Let me just go. I left with them, but then they couldn't see me that I'm, I'm following them. I was following them, but they, they didn't notice me. So they got into KFC. After they got into KFC, I followed them to KFC. And then I also bought myself an ice cream. So I found them taking pictures. When they were taking pictures, I saw the guy that I wanted. I took his head and then I ran outside with it. And then he chased me. After he chased me, he he was like, okay, what's your name? I'm like, my name is Haurailo. And then he told me his name. And then we exchanged numbers from there. And I was so happy because I wanted his number. So we I went home. When I got home, we talked on the phone. We were WhatsApping. We were WhatsApping. And then we stayed up late until we both fell asleep. It felt like a dream because it felt like a fairy tale because it was my first boyfriend. So the following day, he invited me to this park. We went there to chill, fine. And then weeks went by. He started asking me, so I want sex. I'm like, how can you just demand sex like that? I'm still a virgin and I'm not ready to have sex because when I was a little girl, I made a vow to God that I'm going to keep my virginity until I get married. So he was like, okay, but I cannot wait for you for that long. I don't even know if we'll get married or what. So we are still young. I'm like, okay, it's fine. Let me think about it. It was like, okay, cool. So I was like, okay, I love this guy. And well, let's see, maybe he is my husband or maybe he's going to be my husband. Okay, fine. Weeks later, we had sex. I broke my virginity and I didn't fall pregnant from that day. So it was after Good Friday, we had sex again. I was just from my period. I told him, can we please use protection because I'm from my period and I am going to fall pregnant if we don't use protection. He was like, no, you won't fall pregnant. So he insisted that we don't use protection, but I could feel it that mm -mm, I'm going to fall pregnant if we don't use it. So anyway, we had sex that night and I fell pregnant. I told him, 
I missed my period the following month that I was supposed to go on my period. I told him I missed my period. He was like, how? I'm like, how are you asking me how? Because we had sex without protection that night. And then he was like, okay, cool. What are you planning to do? I'm like, why are you asking me what am I planning to do? Of course, I'm going to have this baby. So the guy, he, su he suggested that I, we have abortion because his mom was sick. And me being pregnant at that time, it's not a good time because financially they were not stable. I was like, mm -mm, I'm not having abortion. If you cannot take care of this baby, neither can I because I'm not even working. But my parents, I know they will take care of the baby. So I left. I went home. I didn't even tell them when I was home. I didn't say anything, but my mom, you know, parents know us. She was like, mm -mm, this one, she's gaining weight because my breasts were, were becoming big. And then she was like, mm -mm, why are your breasts like this? I'm like, I don't know, mama, maybe I'm going on my period. So I lied. And then she was like, mm -mm, okay, it's fine. So I only disclosed about my pregnancy because they couldn't see it. I had a small belly. So when I got home, my daddy was sick. He was sick to a point where we thought we could see that uh -uh, he's, no, he's no longer strong. He cannot do this anymore because he had like a, a TB. But he, ref, he, he got TB and then he recovered from that. And then he's, he, went, he went back to smoking. So when he was smoking, there was this other time. This Sunday, we went to, ch we went to church and then he didn't want to come with us to church. So that Sunday, when we left for church, my daddy, he, he went back and then he went to the shop, he bought cigarettes, he started smoking. I don't know how, he, how many he took, but they, they really made a damage. When we came back from church that Sunday, he couldn't stop coughing, like he couldn't stop coughing, it was bad. So I remember my mom, she came to sleep with me in my bedroom. She was like, I can't sleep with your father because the way that he's coughing, no, it's, it's not good. So during the night, my mom was like, how will I wake up? Go and pray for your father. I'm like, ah, mama, next to the rock. She was like, no, go and pray for your father. I think it was in the morning towards five or six o'clock. So I had this dream. In this dream, I just saw darkness. Like there were a lot of people in my house people were crying and then I didn't, I didn't understand what was happening, but then I just saw darkness. So I woke up from that dream. I went to my mother's bedroom to pray for my father. So when I got there, I, I helped him to sit up straight on the bed. And then I was like, did, can I pray for you? He said, yes, pray for me. So I prayed for me, for him. It was around six or seven in the morning. My mom was outside cleaning the yard. So I prayed for him when I was praying for him, but I could see that he's not fine. It's like he was taking his last breath. So I prayed for him, I prayed for him, and then he was like, okay, can you please put on my socks? I'm feeling cold. So I started panicking, he's feeling cold. Okay, I helped him to put on his socks, and then he said, lay me down, I want to sleep now. So I laid him down, and then he said, put a blanket, and then I, I put his blanket. So in that moment, I could see his eyes, like they were rolling, and then he was like, he started vomiting. So when he was vomiting, so I'm crying now, I'm calling for mom, 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 dad is not feeling well. So by the time I went outside to call my mom, he was taking his last breath. So for me, that moment, from that day, I couldn't, I couldn't take it. It was on the 15th of June. I wanted to tell him that I was pregnant, so he left without him knowing that I am pregnant. So that moment, it traumatized me to a point where I was crying my whole pregnancy. By the way, no one knew that I was pregnant. So I called my mom, my mom came, and then she was like, okay. She just came and then she closed my father's eyes. So when she did that, I could see that, no, this is over. So I cried, I cried. She was like, no, don't cry, how? And I'm like, how can I not cry? I just lost my father. And then I asked her, why are you not crying? She's like, I can't, I can't cry. I don't know, but I can't cry. I was like, okay, cool. So she called our family members that came and then we buried my father. So from that moment, I couldn't stop crying. By the way, baby dad is not even talking to me. He's just living his life and I am pregnant. No one knows that I'm pregnant. So I was just crying my whole pregnancy. I was just crying. I didn't have the best pregnancy. I, at some point I cried to a point where I felt like 
something can just broke like just, can just break and then I'll have a miscarriage here and there. When I was crying, I was hurting the baby because there were points where I could feel pains in my stomach. So after we buried my dad, I was like, Mama, I'm feeling pains underneath my belly. So she was like, how? I'm like, I don't know. She's like, mm -mm, when are you are pregnant and do you know it? I'm like, I, I'm not pregnant. And then she's like, when, when, last, when was the last time you went on your period? And I'm like, I don't know. She said, okay, it's fine. I'll give you money to go to the doctor just so you can check what's wrong. So I went to the doctor and then when I got there, the doctor confirmed that, okay, yes, you are pregnant and you are five months pregnant, if not four. And then I was like, okay, cool. So he said, you must start going to the clinic for checkups and all that. I was like, okay, fine. So when I got home, I told mama that, okay, yes, I'm pregnant. And the doctor said the baby is a boy. And then my mom, she was not happy at all. I don't wanna lie. She was not happy, but she, she accepted. And then she was like, it's fine. We'll see what we can do. And then for her, it, I, I felt like it was a burden because she has just lost her husband. And now I'm saying I'm pregnant. And, but she's a strong woman. She was like, it's fine. We'll see what we can do. So now she, she's asking me, where's the father? I'm like, he's in Rustenbeck. And then she's saying, what, what did he say? I'm like, ah, he's not even interested. I was like, okay, it's fine. So after I disclosed to my mom that I'm pregnant, that's when I felt a little bit relieved. I stopped crying more. And then I, start, I started being happy that I'm pregnant. I started to accept that I'm pregnant. So came January 2017 on the 3rd, I gave birth to Divine. So I named him Divine. So I gave birth to a baby boy and then I was so happy. So I picked up my phone and then I called his father just to let him know that I have a baby. And then he, he didn't sound happy, but he was like, okay. I didn't know what to say to him. I was like, I have a baby and it's a baby boy. And then he was like, okay. So I hanged up. And then for me, the time that I was pregnant, I needed him to be there for me. I told him, I don't need your money. Just be here for me. Just ask me, how am I? How am I doing? How's the baby growing? That's all I wanted from him, but he never did any of those things. So I feel like it's something that contributed to my complication in pregnancy. So after I gave birth, I took Divine home. Everything was fine. They checked him up, they checked him up. And then we went home. So when we got home, my mom was like, "Ah, uh -uh, man, this baby is not fine. This baby does not look fine." Uh, uh I'm like, "What do you mean, mama? Nah, I've never had a baby before. This is the first time I'm giving birth. So how does he not look fine?" And she was like, mm -mm, "There's something wrong with him. His chest was heaved up. He had a very big chest, and then his hands they were like folded. His eyes they didn't open. Like from the day that I gave birth to him, he did. They didn't open." So my mom was like, and his skin was wrinkled. He had wrinkles all over his body. My mom was like, mm -mm, there's really something wrong with this baby. So she was like, okay, maybe it's because he's, he has just been birthed. So let's see what will happen during the week. So the, his eyes did not open because when I was pregnant, I liked dogs. So, you know, old people, they have this thing of saying, if you like something, your baby will tend to look like it or what. So they had to cut, um, my dog's fur and then they bend it for him so that's when he started opening his eyes and then he started unfolding his hands because his hands they were folded like this so it's fine they did that for like a week bending those for a uh, fur for from the dog so that his body can at least be stable okay fine they did that and then as a week weeks, weeks were going and then we went to the clinic for his three-day checkup when we got there the nurse said mm -mm, this baby is not growing like his weight is not picking up because when i gave birth to him he was 2,9 kg so it was, he was like mm -mm, his body is not growing like are you breastfeeding him i'm like yes i'm breastfeeding him and he's like mm -mm, he's not growing because his his birth scale it went from 2,9 to 2,8 so he was like, mm -mm, there's something wrong. Are you sure that you are breastfeeding, breastfeeding him enough? I'm like, yes. And then he asked me, is he, is he sucking your breast? I'm like, yes, he's, he is. And, and he was like, okay, fine. 
come back after six weeks for his six week checkup so that we can see what's happening. I was like, okay, cool. So we went back home. And then my mom, but she was always saying, ah, uh -uh, this baby's not fine. How this baby's not fine. I'm like, mama, so what can I do? What can we do so that we can see that he's fine? He's like, okay, let's wait for this six week to come and then we'll take him to the clinic again. So when we got to the clinic, his weight didn't pick up. It was, he was on the same weight. So that's when the nurses were concerned. We're like, mm -mm, there is definitely something wrong with this baby. So they were like, okay, it's fine. We're going to give you a referral letter so that you can go to the hospital and check what's wrong. They did that. They wrote me a letter. We went to the hospital that day, the very same day we went to the hospital. And when we got there, the doctor, the doctor that we got is a general doctor. He's not a pediatrician. So he said to, uh, he said to me, are you breastfeeding this baby? I'm like, yes, I'm breastfeeding him. He's like, okay, it's fine. Let's just wait and see. So after that, after a few weeks, he couldn't, like, he couldn't breathe. The chest that my mom was talking about, or mm -mm, this chest is, is not right, man. Because his body was thin, like he didn't, he didn't have a waist. I don't know if it's, but he didn't have a waist. He was so thin. His body, it was just too tiny. So, but his chest was big. Everything there, it was so tiny, but his chest was heaved up. It's all, it was big, it, as if like something is pumping it to grow. So. I was like, mm -mm, this chest is not all right, how? Like, this is not the, this is not how the baby should look like. But she said, okay, it's fine. Maybe that's how his bone is like, or from his father's side. And then I was like, okay, maybe that's it because he, his father doesn't have, he's not a, he's skinny. He doesn't have a big body. So she was like, okay, it's fine. So there was this time he started, not like he was gasping for air. He couldn't breathe well. So. I came to the bedroom and then I found him like that. He was, this is how he was breathing. And then I called my mom. I was like, mama, come and see how divine is breathing. She was like, what is wrong? When she got there, that's how he was breathing. And then like his body turned from a normal color to blue or black, something like that. And then his eyes were rolling. He started sweating. And then my mom was like, mm -mm bring water, bring cold water. And then she took cold water and then she started doing this on his, on his face. And then he came back and then he started breathing again. So one Sunday we went to church. That Sunday when we came back from church, it was around seven. So he started again divine. He, he started to breathe like that. But this time it was different because it's, it's like he was, he was, he was leaving. I don't know if he was, it's like he was dying, you know? the way he was gasping for air. And then I, I called my mom like, Mama, Divine has started again. She's like, mm -mm, this is not okay. We, we, I said, call an ambulance because at that time I was panicking, I was crying. She said, no, don't cry. When you are crying, like this is, you are hurting the baby. I'm like, ah, but what can I do? She said, let's call, I said, let's call the ambulance. She said, mm -mm, the ambulance is gonna take time. Let me call your cousin to come and take us to the hospital. So we went to the hospital. When we got to the hospital, this time around, we found a pediatrician, someone who knows about babies. I, we went to the ward room and then she started taking off Divine's clothes. And then he was like, she was like, okay, so mama, this is your daughter. And then my mom said, yes. So she asked me, this is your baby. I'm like, yes, this is my baby. And she's like, okay, come and take a seat. So she did checkups and then she called us after that. I felt like I knew what she was going to tell me. I'm not going to like it. It's like I felt it that I'm not going to like it. She said, okay, come through, sit down. And then she said, okay, so you see the way that you see divine. We're like, yes, his hands, his folded hands, his heaved chest and his small head. He started pointing a lot of things on him. And then he was like, this is what we call trisomy 23. Divine is, he has a disorder. So I was like, okay, so what can we do? He was like, this, this condition, it's, 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 I don't know if she said it's very rare or what, but she said this condition, it's, it's like a baby when he's born with that condition, he or she cannot be able to walk, cannot be able to talk, cannot be able to sit, or a baby cannot be able to do what a baby is supposed to do. So I was like, okay, so what's, what's the cure? He, she said, unfortunately, there's no cure for divine's condition. So 
she said there's no cure for divine and this is the condition that divan has to live with for the rest of his life so those words they broke me so basically she said divan is disabled so he won't be able to do anything i was like okay i started crying i started crying i started crying my mom was like no it's fine don't cry so she gave us some sprays so that we can put in divine's nose for the food that were coming out of his nose and then we took divine we went home no she said but we have to take divine for we have to admit divine so that we can monitor his growth because he wasn't growing at well like it wasn't he the, he wasn't gaining weight at all so we went to pitsward that's where they keep children so divine was in high care area where they monitored him and everything so when we got there they put him on oxygen they put him on drips that helped me him to eat with his pipes and then I I I I was like okay so divine this is how he's supposed to live with oxygen on his nose like is this how he's supposed to live for the rest of his life and then the doctor said yes unfortunately this is how he's supposed to live so the doctor said to me are you sure you want to do this I'm like yes I want to go home because I could feel that I was no longer strong I needed to be home where I could get the love that I needed so at that time I didn't feel that I was loved. I felt like I'm in a place where there's no hope, you know, because when the doctors when they tell you something, you have to stick on that thing that okay, divine yes is disabled and he won't be able to work, he won't be able to do anything. So the moment they stick those words in you and they they keep on coming you you end up believing those things that yes, this is what's happening. So I told the doctor I want to go home and then she was like Okay, we'll give you consent form. If anything happens to divine, we as a hospital we're not going to be held liable. I was like, "Fine, just give me the papers. I need to go home." I called my mom. I'm like, "Tell my cousin to come and fetch me." She was like, "How are you sure you want to do this?" I'm like, "Yes, mom, I want to come back home. Divine will be fine. Nothing is going to happen to divine." So, my cousin didn't come to pick me up and then it was getting late. So I started crying and called my mom just call somebody else to come and pick me up because I'm not sleeping here at the hospital today I want to come home. So my mother called uh, my uncle. So my uncle came to fetch me and he was so scared. He was so scared. I could see in his face that he was terrified because they were taking divine off the machines. They were taking the drips, the oxygen, they were taking him off. I was like, "Okay." So the nurse the, the doctor was asking me Where is the father of the baby? I'm like I don't even know where the guy is. Just give me the forms. I signed them. I want to go home. She was like, "Okay, okay, fine." I signed the forms and then my my uncle came and then he also signed where he was supposed to sign and then I took divine. You know the moment they gave me divine, I felt like, "Okay, now I'm going home." So I took divine, but my uncle he was terrified. So we got in the car, we left the hospital. On our way there was this one nurse when we were going and then she was like you know what sissy you don't know what you're doing and the moment you reach the gate divan will be dead i'm like are you got even you yourself now you can die you can die you don't know who's holding your life if divan is supposed to die like this then let him die i don't care but i want to go home so i took my baby there was this one one nurse the other one she said no it's fine divan won't die you will be fine it didn't end there so now i took divine from the hospital i discharged myself and then we got home it start again <laughs> it start again divine start it goes back to zero now divine is not breathing again he start again he's he's gasping for air i'm like ah mama what are we going to do because i discharged myself from that hospital and i'm not going back there my mom was like no it's fine you know what He called she called my pastor and then my pastor would come to my house to pray for divine even in the middle of the night we'll call him divine is not breathing well divine is not breathing and then he would come and pray for him he pray for him over the phone so but for me I had lost faith in God because I was like you know what God I feel like you have failed me I have been a good girl all my life but one just one mistake and then this is how you 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 show me that you are alive I, i i can't feel you anymore i can't see you in my life 
my mom quoted one scripture she said to me you know how well there's this scripture john chapter 9 verse 2 to 4 she said jesus was walking with his disciples and then they saw a blind man they his disciples asked jesus why is this man born blind is it is it because of his sin or because of his parents sin Jesus replied them and said, no, it's not because of his sin or his parents' sin. He was born the way that he was born so that God's power can be shown over his life. I was like, ah, mama, stop quoting scriptures. Ah, God has failed me. I don't even want to hear it. Now we are back at home. Divine skin is still wrinkled and then the chest is still big. Like there's nothing happening. So my mom, my grandmother suggested that we go the traditional way. So I was like, Mama, you know me, I don't like those things. But for divine, I'll do anything. Like I was ready to, to let go of God and do my will now. I was like, God, stay aside because I feel like you have failed me. Now let me do this on my own. Traditional healers, yes. We went there and then she gave me some medicine. And then she said, you must use it on divine. Just bath him with the medication and then what she said when we got there, she said, Divine is not disabled. It's his, his family bone, like from his father's side. This is how their bone is. Divine is not disabled. But when I tried to think, and then I'm like, but his father is, like his body is not stable. Like he's, it's like he's, he's not, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but it's like he's not stable. Like he's not well built. It's just moving around and all that. So she said, um, Divan is not disabled. This is the bone from his father's side. So now I left the things of God. I'm like, God, I've been praying. I've been crying. You are not hearing me. You are not answering me. So I'm like, okay, let me, let me go this other way, this other route. So now I start believing that, okay, Divan is not disabled because she has said that Divan is not disabled. So when we got home, my mom, she was the one who was using those things on divine. She was bathing divine with them. So the wrinkles, they started going, like the skin was coming back to like a baby's skin now. So his hands, they were folding, but then even though they were like this, but then he was folding them slowly. And then, so we were using that medication on divine. They even gave him the other one to drink for the breathing. So I was like, you know, God, but the way these people, they believe in these traditional things, how about we shift it and put the same faith that we have on those things, how about we shift it and put it on God? Because this is not the life that I want. Even, even for me, going on traditional healers, it was never a thing for me. I told my mom, Mama, uh -uh, this is the last time that we're doing this thing. This is wrong. This is very wrong. Uh, this is not how I want divine to be raised. I want like the scripture that you quoted for me i want god's power to work on divine even though i didn't believe in god anymore but i was like you know what let's just leave these things of traditional and let's do doctors and god and then she was like okay it's fine how will do that so she suggested that in the process where we were in the traditional healer she suggested that i call the father i was like uh -uh, i'm not gonna talk to this guy you talk to him she took the phone, she called the father, she was like, can you please go to your mother's grave and tell her that you have a baby? Or just let your parents that you have a baby because Divine here is suffering, we don't know what's wrong. We did anything that we could, you know? So he was like, okay, mama, I'll go. So I don't know if he went or what, but he said he went. So my mom would would also do the same, like she would go and she would talk to my father or anything. How I have a child, by the time you were passing away, she was pregnant and now she gave birth to a baby. And then we named, we named him after you. So open his health or what, what. So I was like, okay, cool, mom. We are done with the traditional things. I am done with the traditional things. Now we are going back to God. So in that process, I started developing hate towards my son. I, I started... I would, I, would, I would sit with him, I would play with him, but deep down, I didn't love him because he's not a vision of what I had in mind. He's not what I wanted in mind. So, and babies are very sensitive. I felt like I was also contributing to him not healing fast because he could feel that mm -mm, this woman, she, she doesn't love me, but everyone else around him, 
they loved him but for me it was too difficult so there were days where i would just pray to god god please just take him away just take him away so that he you can free him from this pain but divan was like mm -mm, i'm here to stay so this time i discharged myself from the hospital i went to the traditional healers and i cannot go back to the hospital where i discharged myself and then there was this nurse you know i felt like there were always angels on the way to give me hope that no don't give up on divine so when we when i go for my checkups there was this nurse who loved divine with all his heart like she loved divine every time when we go for a checkup he, she would call pity pity pity's hair pity's hair pity is his other name so when we got there i told her the news because we were not going for we missed his other checkups because we were admitted in the Sorry, hospital you've got three minutes ah yep you have to wrap it up <laughs> no <laughs> is it still a long story it is i have to change the battery soon okay i'll tell you to stop you can go okay so when we got to the clinic the nurse said to me messi don't let the words of what the doctor said to you in the hospital stick with you play with divine the way that you would have played with him if he was normal or if he was born normal so i had to go back to god and say god forgive me for not loving my son forgive me for not trusting you with his life so i went back to god and i repented and then i started loving my son and then because one thing is that how i how i carry him or how i behave towards him it's how other people are going to treat him how i treat him it's also how other people are going to treat him so i wanted to treat him better so that other people can be able to treat him the way that i treat him so in 2018 uh in november that's when divine took his first step he started working and then i couldn't believe it because i was told that divine will not be able to walk talk or do anything so but in 2018 this uh, november he started working it was um one year nine months he was so happy i think he also couldn't believe it that he is working so i just want to thank god for everything that he did for divine I, I i i didn't believe that one day he would be able to do all those things now he's able to talk he can do anything that he want to do but even though that his spine is not straight his spine is not straight he's it's skewed it's like a they said it's a scoliosis scope so um but it, it doesn't stop him from being him like he is very vibrant he's he, he can do literally everything that he wants to do so i just want to say thank you to god for putting me through this whatever that he was taking me through he knew that i can be able to carry it and he trusted me with divine's life and now i am happy divine is happy we are both happy i just love him to bed he's a very he's a very 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 good kid and he's so intelligent he is so intelligent i also want to thank my pastor for always being there for us he like he did almost everything he he would come and pray for divine so i thank god for everything that we went through and i just want to encourage somebody that whatever that you're going through god trusted you for that thing whatever that you do just know that this is what god wanted for me to go through this is what god trusted me to do so never never feel like um it's a burden or you cannot handle it god gives us some everything that he gives in our life he knows that we can be able to handle it so i just want to thank you so much hi my name is harvelo and i have been through the most <laughs>